Hi guys, we had some questions about how to troubleshoot the CAN bus and see how modules are working in the CAN bus. Not the EtherCAT bus, I think everybody's pretty familiar with the EtherCAT, but this is a, an example of a machine that has the CAN bus on it, and we'll take a look at it here. So this is a K2 machine. This is one that came with CAN bus communication straight out of the factory. So on the K2 machines, to be able to access the BNC program, we have to go into the help menu and then click on test. And we want to diagnose the VNC. It's kind of a weird way to get there, but uh, but that's how you get into the VNC program on these K2s. So hitting in the escape key or F1 is gonna get this these fields to populate here. So I had to hit F1 and then escape, and it popped me out into this field here. So we've got a can sequence uh, field here that we're going to want to go to, or a can sequence screen that we want to go into. And what we've got there is the whole CAN bus being displayed at once. So there's a lot of information here about what the CAN bus is doing. And you'll see a lot of this same information right when you boot the machine up. This is actually the page that shows up when the machine first boots. So what we're looking at here is on the left is a counter that shows how long each one of these modules has been online. We've got a C, an N, and an M. I'm not 100% sure what those are doing there, but you've also got a name field, and the name field is, is very interesting for us because it shows how many of those modules are in that bus. So we can know that we're looking at, by looking at the circuit diagram, we can know that this section right here is CAN1, and then CAN2 is down here. So the reason that we know we're looking at some CAN1 modules here, and they're actually kind of shuffled because this R8 CAN converter down here is actually on CAN1. But, so look at the circuit diagram, to see how the modules are ordered. But we're looking at CAN1 here because it's the one that's got two input modules and then a bunch of outputs. And you can see here that the modules that are on one input, <coughs> excuse me, on one channel of the bus are actually being numbered here. So we've got a zero for the first one, a one for the second one, a zero for the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, down the, down the line there. So we know we're looking at CAN bus one here. We've got a couple in CAN two down here, but look at the circuit diagram and see which ones are which. So we've got some more information over here on the right-hand side where it shows info about the, about the uh, module that's running. So we see that it says running and it gives a software version here. So if you see anything besides running here and you don't see a software version, that module may be having a problem. One, one exception to that is the R8 CAN module. So this R8 CAN module shows no software version. It doesn't have this software slash firmware version loaded on it. And, and so it just shows running. It's working normally, even though it doesn't show this, uh, this software slash firmware uh, version on this right hand side here. So this is a normally functioning CAN bus. One way that you can see, well, I just mentioned, one way that you could see that the CAN bus isn't working correctly, it would not say running here. It would say guarding, or it would say wait software version, or something like that. It's trying to pull that software data off the memory chips inside the, inside the CAN module and is having some kind of problem with that if it doesn't say that it's running. So over here, there's another great way to tell if a CAN module is having problems because this counter will reset. This counter is just counting how many seconds this, or sorry, how many, this is actually the seconds column here. So this is uh, microseconds or something that the, that the CAN bus has been up and running. So we can see here that we've been, that this one's been up and running for quite a while. But on CAN bus systems where you're having a problem with a module, you'll see that this counter actually keeps resetting. So this, this counter would keep resetting. And the very first module 
that keeps resetting is going to be the one that you're having a problem with. On, on a machine that we were just working with, we saw that this first IO32 board kept resetting. So every board down the line behind that IO32 board kept resetting itself and couldn't run. So we started looking at that IO32 board right there and seeing it, what would happen if we swapped that board around. If we swap that board with the next one in the row, we should see this one start counting normally and the next one in the row start resetting and, and resetting itself. So if one of those boards is resetting itself all the time, it's going to mess up the communication all the way down the row. So you're going to start having error messages for a lot of the other boards down the, down the row. In this case, we were seeing problems with the R8 CAN converter because <coughs> because it's the last one in the row, it's the, it's the termination of the CAN bus, so it started throwing up problems. So that's a little bit of information about how to troubleshoot the CAN bus machines. And this is the same for any machine that has the CAN bus as opposed to the EtherCAT bus. So we're looking at older speed cut machines. We're looking at uh, older PBA machines, K2s. Um, all of these kinds of machines are going to be the ones that have the CAN bus instead of the EtherCAT. So any questions, give us a call.